Hi everyone and welcome. In this review note, we're going to look at the basics of NTFS file system permissions. Starting off on my domain controller, I just wanted to point out that I've created some users and groups that we're going to be working with. Three users, John Jones, Jane Doe, Bob Smith, and then group one, group two, group three. John Jones is a member of group one, Jane Doe is a member of group two, and Bob Smith is a member of group three. I switched over on to my member server that is acting as my file server. I'm going to start off by bringing up the properties of the data one folder. If I click on the security tab, that is going to show me the security sheet for NTFS permissions. At the top, I have a list of the four security principles that have access to the resources, creator owner, system administrators, and then users. Administrators is a group on the local workstation and users is a group on the local workstation as well. Each of these represents an access control entry on the access control list, which is the group of the four access control entries. If I select any one of the access control entries, I can see what permissions are applied. Example, if I select administrators, I can see that each one of the permissions is checked off to allow on the other hand, if I select users, we can see that there is a subset of those permissions. So users see read and execute, list folder contents, and read. A couple of things to note here. These are what are called basic permissions. Those will become apparent in a few minutes. And the checkboxes are kind of grayed out. The reason the checkboxes are gray is that the permissions have been inherited from some object further up the ancestral tree. We'll look at inheritance a little bit more later on as well. If I want more information, I can click on advanced. This will give me an advanced view of the access control list. And there's a few things I want to point out in here. One over on the left, we have the security principle. Beside that, we have what level of access. Beside that, we have inherited from. So I mentioned before that we have this thing called inheritance. We see at the top that administrators is none, but below that, each one of these other access control entries is inherited from the root of the E drive. What that means is these permissions are set up on the root of E, and unless we do something to prevent it, those permissions will be applied to every single file system object that is on the E volume. More about that a little bit later as well. Finally, over on the right is applies to, and what that means is the scope. So for example, we look at administrators having full control, that's applied to this folder, subfolders, and files, meaning that not only this folder, but all subfolders that are created inside this folder and all files that are created inside this folder as well. That means that this permission is going to be pushed down through inheritance on all subordinate objects. On the other hand, you'll see that there are a couple of access control entries that do not have that scope, and we'll look at how that works in a little bit down the road either. Don't want to get bogged down in the details right now. If we want to know exactly what permissions are applied through any of these access control entries, we can choose one. I'll take this one for example, and then there's a view button that I can click on. That starts by showing us basic permissions, along with a couple things up at the top. So we see the security principle, it's allow rather than deny, and it applies to this folder, subfolders, and files, so the scope. And then we have read, execute, list folder contents, and read. These are the basic permissions. If we want to see specifically what that means, we have a link called show advanced permissions. I will click on that, and we'll see this list of advanced or atomic permissions. Basically what happens is those basic permissions, these guys, are made up from a combination of these atomic permissions. So between the three, read and execute, list folder contents, and read, there are five atomic permissions that allow that to happen. One thing that's kind of nice about the basic permissions is they cover the majority of our use cases, which means we don't have to get in and try to understand exactly what all of these atomic permissions mean. Something else I want to point out as well, I'm just going to close this out, is that we can look at effective access. And this is an absolutely awesome tool to be able to look at what permissions somebody has without actually having to log on to their account to check it out. I click on the effective access tab. I have to specify what user I'm interested in, or it could be a group. 
I'm going to use our John Jones account. Just put in John. The reason that that immediately took John Jones is because that's the only John we have. If there was any ambiguity, then we would have to choose somebody from the list. Now all I have to do is click on View Effective Access, and I'll scroll down, and we can see that here is the list of atomic permissions that John has. So a couple questions come to mind. Why does John have any permission at all? I go back and look at the permissions tab. I don't see John Jones in the list. However, John is a member of the users group, just like every single user that gets created in the Active Directory domain. As a result of that, he acquires the permissions that are applied to the users group. So going back over and looking at these permissions, we see the list of atomic permissions. Now, one of the things that we looked at a minute ago is that with read and execute on the user's account, there were five atomic permissions. And in here, we can see that there are seven. And these two, create files, write data, and create folders, append data, were not on that list. So how did those get there? Well, if we go back and look at the access control list, we can see that there's one access control entry for users here, but right underneath that, there's another access control entry for users. This one is special, and the reason it says special is because it doesn't apply to any of the standard permissions. But if I view that, notice that none of the basic permissions are checked, only special, but showing advanced permissions, here are those two advanced permissions or those other atomic permissions that we saw over in Effective Access. Create files, write data, create folders, append data. Just gonna close this back out. We'll go over once more quickly looking at Effective Access. And there are those two atomic permissions. So what we know from this is that if you have a user who is a member of multiple groups that have access control entries on some particular file system object, you accumulate all of those permissions. So John got all of the atomic permissions that are pertinent for read and execute, plus the atomic permissions that are applied to special. Let's take a look and see how this actually works. So we, looking at this, John should be able to create some objects in the file system structure. All right, so I've changed over to a client machine that is inside my domain. I'm logged on as John Jones. I'm going to navigate out to that data one share. Let's see if John can create a file. He should be able to do that. And he can, he should be able to do some things in there. And he can, let's see if he can create a folder. He should be able to do that as well. Excellent. So that all works well. Now, what we want to do is see what access can be had from other users on this particular resource. I'm going to log out as John and log in as Jane. Okay, so I've logged out as John, logged in as Jane on that workstation. I'm going to navigate out to that share. And we can see the resources that John has created there. Now, can we open the file? Sure, we can do that. Can we make any changes to it? Nope, we can't do that. We're being presented with the dialog box that will allow us to put a different name in because Jane cannot make any changes to what John created. So I'm gonna get out of that and not save anything. Can we navigate into John's folder? Sure, we can do that. Can we create something inside of this folder? And we can. Now, why is that? Jane is also a member of the users group. And if we remember, we have the ability to write into our data one. And we have the ability to, so which means that Jane can create. And that ability to write is applied to the folder and all subfolders, which means Jane can create something inside of John's folder, but she cannot modify John's file because that permission was not inherited. Now what I want to do is see, could we determine ahead of time what Jane would be able to do? I'm going to switch back over onto my member server. All right, so we're back kind of where we left off. 
Now, what I want to do is get out of here, and we're going to navigate down into the folder that John created. If I look at the properties and security, open that into advanced, you can see that John has full control because he's the owner. And we can also see that the users have been inherited as well. And Jane is part of those users, which is what gives her read and execute and special. So those are the access control entries. But let me go over to effective access. I'll put in Jane. And we'll look at what access she has. And we're going to see it's exactly the same as what John had on the data one folder where she can basically read everything and then create fold files and create folders. Now, what about the file though? I pull up the properties of the file and again, look at security. Going to go in here and we can see, again, John has full control because he created it. Users in this case have read and execute, but that create and modify is not there anymore. Just to look at this, if we look at the effective access for Jane, we'll be able to see that she has those five atomic permissions that are related to read and execute, but the write, so create files, write data, and create folders of pen data have gone away. And just to go back and review why that is, if I go back up onto the data one folder and look at the access control list here, so read and execute, this applies to this folder, subfolders, and files. So it's going to apply to every single subordinate object that gets created. On the other hand, special, the part that gives you right, is this folder and subfolders, no files. And as a result of that, any users who get into the data one directory will again be able to write or create for this folder, they'll be able to create in the subfolders, that will be inherited down on the, any subfolders that are created. But because of the fact that files is not in this list, like we can see in the one above, this permission will not be inherited by file objects and therefore no write on the files. That's it for the NTFS basics. Hopefully this has been helpful for you and we'll see you next time.